Red Brick Media. Oh. High quality CDs, DVDs, lectures, khutbah, conferences, and Quran recitations. All revenue generated supports our Dawa work, supported by visiting our store. You can now purchase directly from our site www.redbrickmedia.co.uk. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين and welcome to episode three of Gems from the Sira. As we've been discussing, the seerah of the Prophet ﷺ, it's deep. Just like the Qur'an is deep and you can keep getting meanings and different meanings from the Qur'an. Likewise, the seerah, obviously to a lesser degree, but the more you contemplate on fine points in the seerah, the more you begin to appreciate the genius of the Prophet ﷺ. You see that things weren't just done haphazardly, but there was always technique and there was always a reason and a wisdom and intelligence and thought and contemplation behind why the Prophet ﷺ chose to do something as opposed to something else. In this episode, we want to talk a little bit about why the Prophet ﷺ, when he was doing da'wah in secret, he chose to teach in the house of Al-Arqam ibn Abi Al-Arqam. And just about every Muslim who knows something about the seerah knows that the Prophet ﷺ taught in the house of Al-Arqam ibn Abi Al-Arqam. But one thing we want to train ourselves to do, ask why. Why did he choose this specific house? When you ask the question, you're going to come up with so many wisdoms, you will appreciate the intelligence of the Nabi Sallallahu so much more. So why did the Prophet choose this house specifically? The house of Al-Arqam ibn Abi Al-Arqam. And we're going to look at four wisdoms behind choosing this place. Number one, Al-Arqam ibn Abi Al-Arqam was a 16-year-old young man. So he was 16 years old, and this is a very important position now to teach in the house of someone in private. You would imagine he would choose the house of Abu Bakr or the house of Uthman or some noble or someone that's known for his place and position, but no one would expect that it would be in the house of a 16-year-old young man. So that's the first wisdom behind the Prophet ﷺ choosing this place. The second thing, Al-Arqam ibn Abi Al-Arqam had just become Muslim and nobody knew that. It's not like Abu Bakr, everyone knew of his Islam. Nobody knew that Al-Arqam ibn Al-Arqam was Muslim. It wasn't made public. So no one would expect that in the house of, of a non-Muslim would be held all these classes and so on and so forth. So that's the second wisdom. The third thing, which is really amazing, Al-Arqam ibn Abi Al-Arqam, this young man, he was from the tribe of Banu Makhzum. And Banu Makhzum, they were enemies of Banu Hashim, the tribe of the Prophet ﷺ. So who would expect the, tr the Prophet from Banu Hashim to teach in the middle of the homes of Banu Makhzum and their known animosity. You may remember a narration where Abu Jahl said, we competed with Banu Hashim until we were like two racehorses, neck and neck. If they fed, we fed. If they gave people drink, we gave people drink. Now they say a Prophet is, um, is from amongst us. How can we ever compete with that? So there was known competition. So who would ever expect that the Prophet Sallam, the Prophet from Banu Hashim, he will be teaching in the middle of the homes of Banu Makhzum, in the house of a young man that no one knows that he is Muslim. Phenomenal. But there's one excellent point, another excellent point, and that is that the house of Al-Arqam ibn Abi Al-Arqam was next to a safa We all know a safa and a marwa. And what is intelligent and great about this is that there's so much traffic in that area that people could come for the secret class, for the secret meetings, and leave without people noticing it. Imagine this. Imagine the house of Al-Arqam ibn Abi Al-Arqam was in the middle of this, this prairie or just the middle of, a, of an open field. And Muslims are coming for a class is in secret in his home. So you see from a distance a Muslim walking, 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 and he goes into the house. Then you see another Muslim walking all the way across this empty field to the house. Then you see Muslims leaving the house. And all day you see people coming and going. Would that be suspicious? Would that be detectable? Obviously. But it's more inconspicuous when it's done in the house in, in a place where it's busy, people coming and going, hustle and bustle. So you can't feel or, or have a, a good tally or an idea of who's coming in and who's leaving. So now, you know these four points about why the Prophet ﷺ did the da'wah in secret in the house of Al-Arqam ibn Al-Arqam. Now you for sure will, will appreciate the seerah so much more. So next time you're sitting in a class when someone, when the sheikh or the speaker is saying the Prophet ﷺ taught in the house of Al-Arqam ibn Abi Al-Arqam, the guy next to you will probably be like, yes, I'm aware of that. But for you, it'll be different now. It'll have more value and you will say, yes, it was in the house of Al-Arqam ibn Abi Al-Arqam and you'll appreciate 
the, how genius the Prophet ﷺ was. So I hope you enjoyed that gem. Keep contemplating on the seerah. Thank you for your attentive listening. Sallallahu wa baraka ala Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم